the headlines. Presidential Election Petition Tribunal begins sitting in Abuja, strikes out Action Alliance petition. Code of Conduct Tribunal asks President-elect, Governors-elect and others to submit assets declaration forms before May 29. 129 more Nigerian evacuees from Sudan arrive in Abuja. And on the foreign scene, Malian political coalition opposes constitutional referendum. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you for joining us. Now the news in full. The presidential election petition tribunal sitting in Abuja has adjourned matters brought before it challenging the outcome of the 2023 presidential election to 10th May. The presidential candidates of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Labour Party, LP, Action People's Party, APP, and Allied People's Movement, APM, are challenging the declaration of Bola Tinobu of the All Progressive Congress, APC, as the winner of the 25th February 2023 elections. At the start of the hearing on Monday, the Action Alliance, AA, announced the withdrawal of its petition against the APC and its candidates. Date. Justice Haruna Simon Zamani is leading a five panel a member panel of justices, including Justice Moses Ugo, Justice Bulaji Yusuf, Justice Seven Ada, and Justice Abba Muhammad. In his inaugural speech, Justice Amani assured the parties that justice will be done and urged counsel to cooperate with the tribunal to ensure that the petitions are decided speedily. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Action Alliance uh, has withdrawn its protest a petition at the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal challenging the emergence of Tinubu as president-elect. The announcement of the withdrawal was made by the chairman, Adekunle Rufai Omoaji. This comes amidst a leadership crisis within the party, with Omoaji recognized by the court as the chairman. The report. The chairman of the party, Adekunle Rufai, justified the withdrawal of the party's protest petition to the presidential election petition tribunal. To start with, our party, Action Alliance, was neither challenging the emergency of Aswa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, nor the victory of APC in this instance. But protesting the process adopted by the umpire, Heineck, building up to the election. Our growth is with Heineck and its approach to issues that concerns our party spanning over months, build up to the election. The national chairman of the party, with his national executive, had instructed that this petition should be filed when we filed it. And the basis for the petition was the crass disobedience of various court orders by INEC. This petition was, in the main, an attempt to bring INEC back to appreciate that no matter how powerful they are, they cannot disobey court orders. However, INEC recognized AA national chairman Kenneth Udeze and his counsel were both present at the court, also made their views known. And this faction that filed a petition went on appeal. They appealed that judgment. It is pending before the Court of Appeal about that division. Now, INEC, in compliance with that judgment, dealt with the uh, barrister Kenneth today's uh, late national chairman of Action Alliance. Now, why the, why the appeal is pending, they filed this petition purportedly under Action Alliance. But the true and authentic leadership of Action Alliance was not aware of it. 
I want to really congratulate every member of Action Alliance across Nigeria because uh, we have gotten to the end. Um, our opponents, those that have been fighting the leadership of the party, they wanted to be clever by half. At least they have seen what we have fought in court and they know they cannot respond. Reason why they have come today to withdraw the, their, their petition. Adekunle insists that the withdrawal is among other things based on his belief that the president elect being a proponent of restructuring will deliver the goods Nigeria needs to grow as a country. Whoa, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Supreme Court has fixed May 9th for judgment in the appeal filed by former Oshun Governor Boyega Oyetola against the election of Ademola Adeliki. In his appeal, Oyetola is seeking the reversal of the March 25th judgment of the Court of Appeal in Abuja, which affirmed Adeliki's victory in the last governorship election in Oshun State. The appeal court had in its judgment set aside an earlier judgment by the Oshun Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, which was given in favor of Oyetola and removed Ademola Adeleke. A five-member panel of the Supreme Court announced the date after taking arguments from lawyers to parties on Monday. The Code of Conduct Bureau has asked the President-elect Bola Tinubu, the Vice President-elect Kashim Shatima and 28 incoming governors to declare their assets before May 29 inauguration. Senators-elect and reps-elect are also expected to declare their assets before June 5th when they will be sworn in. Spokesperson of the Bureau, Veronica Kato, has said that the assets declaration was an integral part of the swearing-in ceremony according to the law adding that several elected officials had started picking their assets declaration forms at the ccb state offices nationwide and that they were expected to submit the field copies to the bureau before the inauguration day now following school resumptions, parents have been called upon to monitor their children to ensure that they attend school. School teachers in Abuja made the call in an interview with Kaberi Lawal, who monitors progress since the resumption of schools last week. The report. <laughs> since education is the best legacy parents can bequeath to their children, Parents are expected to play a critical role to ensure moral upbringing by inculcating religious knowledge into their daily activities. They should not leave the responsibilities of uh, training their children limited to the school because charity begins at home. A child has to learn from the school, from the home, at the same time, now bring it to the school. So parents should not neglect their responsibilities on their child. They should take their children to Islamic school where they teach them Islamic studying and Arabic, they teach them Quran. When you come to this school in the morning now, you see the first thing we do after assembly is Quran. You see our children, they gather for the Quranic recitation, which maybe at home they are not doing it. But when they come to school, there is no how they won't do without recitation of Quran. Area of a rectangle is 48. Teachers also advise the parent to get their words all the requirements needed in the school to achieve their full potentials. Yes, I advise parents to actually uh, provide those material necessaries for the children because um, the student cannot excel only on coming to school alone uh, or reading their textbooks. So with this modern generation, the parents need to uh, equip their, the children's library uh, buying uh, these uh, computer gadgets and uh, all these uh, modern uh, teaching is for them. Parents have a lot to contribute to the school. Now basically, they actually think that maybe it's only the teachers that need to guide the children. But we need their views as well. No, we have something we call indigenous education, and in which it must be learned at home. So without their, how, how are we going to equip those students perfectly? So we need their views. So when they give you their views or their clues to what the children are doing, so we actually what we can work on that and everything will be whole key. I love my school because it is a Muslim school. And they, teach it, and they teach me well. I would like to tell them they can start using computer because computer can be very useful, very useful in life. They should go and try the computer and using it. They should try and use the computer. Parents are struggling to meet up basic requirements 
since the resumption of schools in Abuja. Kabir Lawal, Trust TV News, Abuja. 129 more Nigerians have fled war-torn Sudan as the federal government further strengthens its efforts to repatriate stranded Nigerians in the North African country. The returnees arrived on Monday at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja on board the Taku Airlines from Port Sudan. Comprising 124 adults and five infants, they were received by officials of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Nigerian Immigration Service, among others. NEMA's Director of Special Duties, Onimode Abdullahi Bandeli, said that over 1,000 Nigerians are still stuck in the war torn country adding plans that are on the way to evacuate them as soon as possible. In all, over 800 Nigerians fleeing war-torn Sudan arrived in Abuja on Sunday. The Nigeria Safety Investigation Board, NSIEB, and Nigerian Civil Aviation Authorities, NCAA, have expressed readiness to conduct a thorough investigation on the cause or causes of Max aircraft tire bust. The NCAA Director General, Captain Musa Nuhu, said in a statement issued on Monday in Abuja that the outcome of the investigation would help the agencies to make appropriate recommendations to prevent any real of such incidents. The NCAA boss affirmed that Abuja Airport was shut down due to the disabled aircraft on the runway as Enamdi Azikiwe International Airport is a single runway airport. Nuhu stated that a notice to Airmen Notam was issued by NAMA accordingly. According to him, the runway was inspected and swept for damage and debris by officials of NCAA Federal Airport Authority fan and Nigerian airspace management agency NAMA after which the runway was declared safe. Justice E.I. Orise Jaffo of the Delta State High Court sitting in Eforun has sentenced Emmanuel Wekbe and Peter Okoro to death by hanging. Orise Jaffo sentenced the duo to death on a two-count charge of conspiracy and armed robbery. In his judgment, the judge ruled that the prosecution presented overwhelming evidence that was sufficient to discharge the burden of proof on the case. During the trial, the prosecution Execution counsel Eziana Ejiofo told the court that the offense was committed on September 24, 2016, when the accused conspired and stole Ode's bike by dispossessing him of it in the pretest of boarding the bike from Utsu or to Jeremy Junction to Ohawa town of, you know, for 400 Naira. Now, reacting to the judgment, the prosecuting counsel expressed satisfaction with the judgment. You're watching news update on Trust TV. Coming up, we take a look at why my Adua International Market remains local. Details on this and more after the break. Stay with us. Documenting the Nigerian story.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update. And here is a recap of our top stories. Report 2 Presidential Election Petition Tribunal begins sitting in Abuja and strikes out Action Alliance's petition. And Code of Conduct Tribunal asks President-elect, Governors-elect and others to submit asset declaration form before May 29. Now moving on, two more stories. Nasra State Command of the Security, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has handed over thousands of railway sleepers seized from vandals in different parts of the state to the Nigerian Railway Cooperation, NRC. Public Relations Officer of the Command, Jerry Victor, made this known during the presentation of the items in Lafia. Abu Bakar Abdullah sent in the report as presented from our studio. The operations that led to the seizure of the rail line, slippers and other railway materials by the National States Command of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps spanned three years and at different locations across the state. Speaking on the efforts of the command to protect public property, the NSCDC Nasara State Command Public Relations Officer, Jerry Victor, said due to the activities of vandals, the command beamed its searchlight on different parts of the state, adding that successes were achieved as thousands of railway materials were seized from the vandals. Lots of um, uh, vandalized uh, materials within, uh, within the Sarawak state were all seen, and um, today we are handing all these materials back to the Nigerian Railway Corporation. Yes, uh, this is the activities that is on. As you speak, so all the material that we see within this uh, period under review is being returned back to the Nigerian Railway Commission. He explained that suspected vandals arrested with the seized items were already facing prosecution before different courts in the state. The NSCDC public relations officer, while saying that activities of the vandals are preventing the citizens from enjoying public facilities, called on residents to be wary of criminals and report their activities to security agencies for prompt action. So I am calling on to the people within Nasa and even outside to, to, to not try to sabotage the effort of the government. They should try in all ways, in all ramifications, to see that here yeah, they support the policies and implementations of all uh, government at all levels. So I'm calling on people, uh, the general public, to be wary. Staff of Nigeria Railway Corporation received deceased materials on behalf of the organization as the National State Command of the NSCDC. Austin Ashibajo is the North Central District Manager of the Nigeria Railway Corporation. We are here to evacuate the vandalized materials that were arrested by the civil defense and were kept here. The NRC district manager, who said the materials have already been sold to the highest bidder, appreciated and commended the NSCDC for the seizure. He said NRC, as an organization, will continue to partner security agencies in the areas of protection of personnel and property. Traders in May Adua International Market in Katsuna State are concerned about the state of the market despite the internally generated revenue connected or collected by the local government authorities from traders. The market has been in existence for decades, but traders complain that it cannot measure up to its international designated uh, because designation because most of the traders at their wares are situated in the open field. They are therefore calling on the Katsuna state government to improve the infrastructure of the market so that it can meet up with global standards. Gaza Yakubu has the details. The number of traders that patronize May Adwa International Market in Katsuna state is colossal. By implication, the internally generated revenue collected from traders which has existed for as long as the market was established is equally huge. Unfortunately, merchants cannot see a commensurable development of the market in terms of infrastructure. We are not convinced the way the resources is being managed. You can even say the resources are being fast-analyzed. They are not managed effectively the way they are supposed to be managed. My suggestion to the government, state or federal government, supposed to have intervened.
as an international market serving as an exchange point in the northwest, may Adwai share in the border with the Republic of Niger. It is therefore patronized by traders from neighboring countries who come with diverse items of trade. It is sad that all these activities are carried out in an open environment which is uncomfortable. Kagarun fazana ni hane shugaban wurin nan amma duburin fata gaba dai ni kan kai na I'm the head of this market but I'm not happy with the condition of this market because there's not even a room to stay despite this scorching sun I'm appealing to government to come to our aid The government should help us in this market especially during the rainy season everywhere is always muddy we want government to do the needful to make the market more comfortable we always pay our revenue and that's the reason why government should come to our aid what do the authorities have to say over this development the revenue officer in me adwa international market is reluctant to make a comment on the subject matter but has referred us to his superior officers at the local government level however a tax collector argues that some traders are not complying with the law an tsara rabonuwa abinda za a rika an sa hannun jama'a naira 200 the revenue they give is affordable instead of the people to pay the 200 naira most of them are not complying if we give them the receipt of the payment they don't pay the capacity of the local government to generate revenue internally is a very crucial consideration for its creation It has been established that the Adwa Local Government Council in Kasina State is generating revenue to justify its existence largely through its market. However, little is been done to improve the standard of these very important golden goose. Gaza Yakubu, Trust Television News, Kasina. On health matters, Director General Nigeria Center for Disease Control Ifedayo Adetifa says that the threat of the COVID-19 virus remains within countries and globally and particularly for high-risk groups. He said this on Sunday against the backdrop of Friday's declaration by the Director General of the World Health Organization Tedros Ghebreyesus that COVID-19 was no longer a public health emergency of international concern. Adetifa in a statement said the declaration was to enable countries transition from acute emergency response to managing COVID-19 as part of integrated healthcare delivery for all infectious diseases. He said the declaration was made after a careful review of current evidence that showed there was high population level immunity from the SARS-CoV-2 infection, improved knowledge of the virus and management of confirmed COVID-19 cases, a decline in the global burden of the virus and a steady increase in vaccine uptake across countries. He said Nigeria has already de-escalated its COVID-19 response since 2022 in response to local epidemiology focused on encouraging covid-19 vaccination and recommended discretionary use of face masks and other public health safety measures according to personal risk assessments And on to the foreign scene, a number of political associations in Mali have joined forces to oppose the military government's decision to hold a referendum on a new constitution on June 18th. The referendum announced on Friday is a milestone on the country's path towards elections promised for February after a coup three years earlier. The referendum has been previously scheduled for March 19th but was postponed. The coalition is demanding the cancellation of the decree uh, to convene the electoral bodies because it considers the ruling authorities illegitimate, Radio France International RFI reported. The group also points out that more than two thirds of the territory being plunged into generalized insecurity according to our FI And lastly, in sports news, Plateau United's ambition to participate in the Super 6 fixtures for the Nigerian Professional Football League title was scuttled at the new stadium in Jos with visiting Remo Stars stunning the Highlanders 2-1 in an away victory. In a fiercely contested encounter for one of the slots in the group, the visitors' late strikes from Adams Olalekan and Adebayo Olalekan ensured that the Stars out 
shown the Highlanders in their backyard to inflict another home defeat since 2021 when Quara United ran away with a 2-0 victory in December 2021. Saido Salisu strike inside the box gave the Highlanders the lead in the 7th as the goal stunned the visitors who became more adventurous up front and mounting pressure until the plateau defense caved in for the equalizer from Adams Olaleka punishing a careless defense to level scores for the visitors in the 81st. As the game was winding down, Olaleka Adebayo sealed victory for the visitors with a long-range strike that left plateau keeper stranded for the winner in the 88th. Uh, the victory in just placed Remo Stars in the third position with 30 points and plateau United in the fifth with 25 points in Group A of the Abridged League. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust TV News Update. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.